Hello, this is Jonathan Kay reporting virtually from Massachusetts on the last day of ULAR 2022, which has taken place in Copenhagen. This has been an excellent meeting with many interesting sessions over the past four days. The hybrid format, allowing both live and virtual attendance, worked very well. This morning, at the scientific session on interstitial lung disease and rheumatic and musculoskeletal diseases, two abstracts were presented about interstitial lung disease and rheumatoid arthritis. As had been presented on the second day of this meeting in abstract OP0132, the prevalence of interstitial lung disease and rheumatoid arthritis is nearly 10%. Risk factors include cigarette smoking, male sex, presence of rheumatoid factor or anti-citrullinated peptide antibodies, known as ACPA, genetic predispositions such as having the MUC5B promoter variant, older age at onset, longer disease duration, and higher disease activity. This extra articular comorbidity is associated with increased mortality. In abstract OP0306, Ranya Ramian of the German Rheumatism Research Center in Berlin presented data from the German Rabbit Registry regarding the effect of systemic inflammation on interstitial lung disease in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. She and her colleagues investigated whether higher disease activity was associated with the development of interstitial lung disease in their patient population. Of the nearly 20,000 rheumatoid arthritis patients that had been enrolled in this registry through 2020, they identified 133 incident cases of interstitial lung disease and 660 matched controls. Over the 12 months prior to the onset of interstitial lung disease, disease activity, as measured by DAS-28 ESR, and levels of ESR and CRP were higher for cases than for matched controls. When adjusted for cigarette smoking, rheumatoid factor, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, number of prior biologics, and mean glucocorticoid dose within the year prior to the index date, odds ratios for acute phase reactant elevation were significantly elevated. However, the odds ratio for DAS-28 ESR moderate or high disease activity versus low disease activity or remission was not. This result was confirmed in a sensitivity analysis of the 81 patients for whom interstitial lung disease had been validated by imaging studies. The findings of this study contrast with those of the 2019 publication by Jeffrey Sparks and colleagues from the Brass Registry, in which DAS-28 ESR moderate or high disease activity conferred a twofold increased risk of developing interstitial lung disease. Thus, Replication of this study in yet another large rheumatoid arthritis patient registry will be necessary to determine whether DAS-28 ESR moderate or high disease activity is a risk factor for the development of interstitial lung disease. Nonetheless, systemic inflammation must be controlled to prevent the development of interstitial lung disease in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. In abstract OP0307, Michael Brink of Umeå University in Northern Sweden presented data from a prospective study that investigated the relationship between pulmonary fibrosis, genetic loci, and individual ACPA fine specificities in 841 patients from an inception cohort of early rheumatoid arthritis. Chest radiographs were performed in all patients, and high-resolution CT scanning was performed if suspicious findings were observed on plain radiographs, if signs or symptoms of lung disease developed, or upon initiation of biologics. The 50 patients with pulmonary fibrosis were older and had higher disease activity than the nearly 800 controls. GWAS genotyping using the Illumina Global Screen Assay analyzed over 570,000 genome-wide single nucleotide polymorphisms and found a significant association between the development of pulmonary fibrosis and four of these single nucleotide polymorphisms, including the MUC5B promoter variant. After adjusting for age, sex, cigarette smoking, and rheumatoid factor, each of six specific antibodies against citrullinated peptides was significantly associated with the development of pulmonary fibrosis in these patients with early rheumatoid arthritis. A higher number of ACPA fine specificities was associated with a greater risk of developing pulmonary fibrosis. However, there was no association between the presence of these autoantibodies and the risk alleles associated with pulmonary fibrosis. The results of this study suggest that testing for ACPA fine specificities might be useful in clinical practice to identify those rheumatoid arthritis patients at greater risk for developing pulmonary fibrosis. However, 
the ACPA microarray that was used by these investigators is not yet commercially available. These two studies emphasize the importance of screening patients with rheumatoid arthritis for interstitial lung disease with chest radiographs and if these reveal abnormalities or if patients exhibit symptoms with high resolution CT scanning. Serologic testing for rheumatoid factor and ACPA should be performed. Irrespective of whether interstitial lung disease is present, treatment should be directed toward control of disease activity. In addition to composite disease activity indices, ESR and CRP levels should be followed. Now that ULAR 2022 has ended, I look forward to attending the American College of Rheumatology annual scientific meeting in Philadelphia in November 2022 and ULAR 2023 next year. For more information about these and other presentations at ULAR 2022, go to roomnow.com. I'm Jonathan Kay.